How's it going everyone? My name is Fam Fryer. Welcome back to another Padres daily content video where today I'm going to be giving you guys five of the San Diego Padres top trade targets this offseason. First of all, I want to say one of these guys I mentioned in my past video talking about possible free agents, but he's worth re-mentioning as he's a super talented player and someone that I really, really want to see the Padres go after. If you guys haven't already seen that video, please make sure to go check that out. There's going to be a little link in one of the corners. And without further ado, let's hop right into this. Now, the first player on this list is Jesus Lazardo, Jesus Lazardo, a pitcher for the Miami Marlins. Why exactly the Miami Marlins be willing to trade away a guy with control like Jesus Lazardo? For the simple facts that they're willing to trade a pitcher to get an outfielder. Now, we have an outfielder that fits the mold of what they're trying to get, Trent Grisham. Am I saying we're going to get him straight up for Trent Grisham? No, not exactly. As you guys see right now, the details of the trade. I have Jesus Lazardo going to the San Diego Padres in exchange for Nabil Krizmat. The reason I threw Krizmat in there is I feel like he doesn't have that great of a role in the San Diego Padres, and I think he can get much more value elsewhere. And it's nothing wrong with Krizmat. He's a great pitcher, but this is just in my opinion. Trent Grisham would be the centerpiece of the trade, and Ray Kerr, who's kind of like a triple, quadruple A type of player where he's not going to make it up to the majors and perform that well, but maybe he'll work on another team. We acquired him from the Adam Frazier trade. Now, what do you get in a player like Jesus Lazardo? Well, first of all, you get another lefty starter, which is something the San Diego Padres need and we had a lack of this year. I think we have in accountability with Ryan Weathers, and I think this is definitely someone that can help fill the void. He's an XA. So Bob Melvin's obviously going to like him because Bob Melvin wants his guy. And Sean Maniah is definitely gone. So I think, yes, Jesus Lazardo can be his guy. Lazardo also had one of the best second halves in baseball as a pitcher last season. And I would say he's very comparable to Blake Snell in a way. And it's just someone I would love to see the San Diego Padres go after for that fourth or fifth starter, kind of depending on how everything falls out with Nick Martinez. Because at the time I'm recording this video, we have no idea about Nick Martinez, if he's opting in, opting out, or extending on a new deal. The second person I want the San Diego Padres to go after is Hunter Harvey. This is someone that was mentioned to me by a guest of mine on a podcast. Now, Hunter Harvey, what do you get with him before we even get into the details of the trade? Well, he brings Velo. He's a reliever. He's very good as a replacement option for Suarez. Because at this point, I personally believe that Suarez is a goner. Unfortunately, I think that he's going to get a payday. And you know what? Tip is capped to him. Congrats, man. You did a lot for us this year. I hope you enjoy that payday. But now we got to look on filling the void. Hunter Harvey is a guy that can fill that void. He has velo. He had a great year for the Nationals. And trading for a reliever isn't going to take that much. So as you guys see on the screen right now, I have the San Diego Padres trading away Hunter Harvey for Jay Groom. Now, we'd be giving up a little bit more value in terms of the MLB trade analyzer value sheet. Do I think that that's really the, the case? No. I think Hunter Harvey would be great on the Padres. And I think that Jay Groom fits the mold of going to the Nationals because he's he's a younger guy. He's kind of like, like a quadruple-A pitcher, as we mentioned pr previously. And I think that he's a guy that could, you know, sell some tickets, get get something, and they could possibly get something for. And it's just, it's it, you know, it's part of the path of a rebuilding team to acquire players like that. And I think the Nationals would be definitely interested in making this deal. So it's very, very simple. Two-player trade, very easy. You get one of the better relievers in baseball and a guy that's going to hopefully fill Suarez's shoes, which is going to be a tall task, but it's very possible. And now we're getting into the biggest hypothetical trade of it all. And before you guys comment mad at me, before you guys get pissed off at me when I say this, I don't think Shohei Otani is going to get traded to the San Diego Padres. I think there's definitely going to be buzz about it this year. But if I was to acquire Shohei Otani, this is what you need to give away. As you see on the screen right now, we have Shohei Otani straight up no other players involved there's a possibility it'd be kind of similar to like a soto trade and what would you be giving away well nabil krismat first of all I, I i put him on the list a lot and it's nothing personal to him trent grisham obviously jay groom joshua mears jackson merrill who's going to be the biggest guy your first round pick from two years ago and arguably the best prospect the san diego padres have had since the aj prela era has taken over besides Tatis, obviously, has been Jackson Merrill. I, in my opinion, I think is the best player we've ever drafted. Now, you're also going to give up Snelling, who's our second round pick last year. That's a lot. I don't know what you want me to say. You're getting Shohei Otani. 
So if that's what needs to happen, that's what needs to happen. And I see these hypothetical trades going around where we give up Blake Snell and I, I get it kind of, but I just don't think it makes sense. I think Blake Snell staying in San Diego for the rest of his career. If he's going elsewhere at Seattle, I don't, I don't really see him going up to Anaheim. I don't think it's possible. Now the last big dollar Prelapalooza big splash trade I could see AJ Preller making is Brian Reynolds. Now, first of all, Brian Reynolds is a guy that's been thrown around. Preller likes to hear the same names over and over and over. He has his guys, and Brian Reynolds seems to be one of those guys. Now, Brian Reynolds is a switch hitter who's coming off of two career seasons and two of the, two of the best seasons in baseball. Um, I think that he's a borderline MVP candidate in most people's eyes. Am I super high on him? Not necessarily. If you're telling me who comes at the same price, Otani or Reynolds, I'm taking Otani, and I think everyone agrees with that just for many, many reasons. His talent, the way he performs on the field, the way he carries himself, his jersey sales, his marketability. Brian Reynolds, most people haven't heard of Brian Reynolds across baseball unless you're a pretty big baseball fan. Otani, everyone and their mother knows Otani. So I think it's very, very simple if you're telling me that. But I think it's going to take exactly the same exact package. The names I already mentioned, Chris, Matt, Grisham, Groom, Mears, Merrill, Snell. Do I think it's worth it? Fuck no. I don't think it's worth it at all. I would not do that, but I'm just going to throw it out there into the realm of names. Now, the last trade we're going to be discussing, and it's partially my fault that I didn't discuss this better in the last video when I mentioned this guy, is Alex Verdugo. I already discussed why I think we should get the Alex Verdugo. He hasn't hit below 280 in his career when he's played a full season. The guy is a singles hitter. He's going to get on base. He plays mediocre defense, and he's going to be better than Profar at Profar's job. So I think now that we know that Profar is going to walk, Verdugo is a great option. Now, what would you have to do to get Alex Verdugo? Well, the simple thing is I think we're going to get Alex Verdugo, and we'll bring back Dan, Dan the man, Dan Altavilla in a trade where we get him as a reliever he would be someone we could possibly dfa but it would make sense to give him a try i think we're gonna give up kevin cops who is our third round pick from about two to three years ago and joshua mears both these guys are guys that work on the red sox because the red sox are kind of like in an accelerated rebuild process and i think it's a team that could use these guys down in the future i guess it's considered an overpay by the mlb trade analyzer website i wouldn't consider that you get a great play in alex verdugo and I think Alex Verdugo would stay in San Diego for the rest of his career if it was up to him. That's just in my opinion. If there is any other names you want me to mention, please comment down below anyone else you guys are interested in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.